All right, today I'm going to talk about decoding a binary number to just a regular decimal number so that it may be displayed on a seven segment display that I have here. This is a common cathode seven segment display that I purchased a little while ago and I wanted to actually redo this lab that I did at school because we were doing decoding and we didn't have enough time to finish it and the, and the reason why we didn't have enough time to finish it was because it just took so long to do the wiring um, and just to give you an idea of what's going on I'll, I'll explain uh, exactly uh, how we, we do this decoding so for example if you have if you have some binary numbers, a 4-bit binary number uh, you automatically know that's going to be zero okay that's going to be decimal zero and with each one what you need to do is somehow make this representation uh, displayed on that seven segment that I was talking about so that you get a decimal number. Um, now to decode this all the way from zero to nine it does take quite a bit of logic and what I'm going to show here is how that happens and uh, maybe a quick way to, to get through it too in case you want to do this because ideally um, you wouldn't want to do this because there's integrated circuits out there that already do the decoding for you and it's a bit insane to try to wire all this up unless you're just interested or you just want to try it out for yourself but I, I wouldn't recommend doing it as an efficient way to decode uh, binary so with that said uh, let me just show you how to get started on it alright so we know that we need at least four inputs W, X, Y, and Z why do I need four? Well, because three inputs just won't cut it. You'll only be able to display zero to seven or have an eight, eight possible outputs. So you need that extra W to get all the way up to nine. Now, it's going to be a little bit more than what you need because you're going to have 16 possibilities now. And the remaining you can just ignore. So in other words, from 10 to 15 you could ignore because you can't display 10 on one, seg on one seven segment display. So um, I'll get into that in just a second. Here are the decimal representations of the numbers, and I put them in terms, labeled them in terms. So, just to give you an idea of how you can decode this or how you can map the binary value to the display, take, for example, minterm 1, which is going to be the second row here, minterm 1. This is binary 1. How does it need to look on the seven segment display? Well, segment B. I don't know if you can see that. Segment B and segment C need to be illuminated. So you can just kind of shade that in. That needs to be illuminated when you want to display the number one. Let's go back to our map here. So everything else needs to be zeros except for B and C. All right, and that's going to be for the number one displayed on the seven segment. Two, you want to have segment A, B, D, E, and G illuminated and the others at zero. And you're going to have to do that for each number. Now I circled the column that I did by hand and um, what you're going to do here is actually use a K map to minimize this um, because this expression by itself would be pretty large if you just keep it in the normal form. So use a K map and definitely utilize the don't care conditions because you'll be able to minimize it a lot a lot more easily um, and just to give you an example here here's the first expression all right and it's only got four terms pretty simple um, I didn't write out the other terms by hand because there's a program out there that will do this for you and what I mean by that is you put in all the inputs in a truth table like this and the program will actually generate these expressions Okay, because it has an internal KMAP solver. And the program I'm referring to is called Logic Friday. All right, Logic Friday, and it's for Windows machines, uh, and it's free. So definitely recommend using that when you want to get these expressions, because you're going to have to use these expressions um, to generate the proper mapping on your seven-segment display. Now, you can use any, well, not any, but you can use a whole variety of gates to make this happen 
but I'm going to just kind of tell you what I used. I'm going to flip this over. I used a combination of OR and an inverter. All right, those are fundamental gates. And I needed six of the OR, four of the AND, and one inverter right here, the 4069. Uh, the other three down here, or I'm sorry, the, the last two down here are optional. Um, if you want to use push buttons to generate the binary number yourself, you can, but you're going to need four push buttons for that. I didn't want to use four push buttons. I wanted to actually use this 4-bit uh, up-down counter, and I just purchased it. It's the 74LS193, and it's got a lot of features on it, such as uh, counting up or counting down, resetting it, cascading it to another counter, etc. Um, and I don't know everything about it, so what I did do is I put a reset button so that it would reset because once it gets to nine, it goes through this weird sequence of numbers and then it goes to like this unreadable character. Um, it's something that I need to just read up more on. But anyway, this is optional. Um, so is the 555 timer. I wanted to do the increment automatically with this timer so I didn't have to press anything else. Um, but you can imagine just the first three why, I mean, the, these first three gates wired together to generate the expressions that you want on this side, these expressions, takes quite a bit of time. And um, I've got the circuit here just to show you. This is the amount of work that's required when it comes to wiring up those gates to get the expressions. Um, this took quite a bit of time. Uh, it took, I don't know, probably two hours to get it right because any mistake that you make on the wiring will will affect this display and you can see I tried to reuse a lot of the expressions here like X prime Z prime I reused that because it was it was repeated in some of the other expressions that were generated so that may help uh, but again this is not really an ideal setup especially when there's an entire integrated package that you can purchase that will do this for you. It will actually do the decoding for you so you don't have to worry about it. Um, but this is kind of a good exercise if you're learning or if you're in school and you just want to see it happen on your own. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and you'll see that the seven segment display will begin at zero and it will count automatically up by itself via this counter that I was talking about earlier. And it's going to count at a rate that is dictated by the timer, the 555 timer here, and the 555 timer's output will be displayed visually on this LED. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. All right, and there, there it's good, and there's going. All right. I'm going to go ahead and reset it. Starts at zero, starts counting up again. And notice once it gets past nine, it goes into this weird character, and then kind of goes through this strange sequence of numbers. But it'll eventually start over at zero again. Haven't haven't figured out how to feed the output back into the counter so that it will reset itself. There's got to be some way to do that. But uh, just in case you don't have to wait, you can just go ahead and press the push button to send an active low signal to the reset pin on the counter. But anyway, that's it.